Kyle, thank you for having me. Uh, recently, uh, I helped a friend. He bought a used house, and I was helping him fix it up. And after helping him fix up this used house, I just have one question. Who thought wallpaper was a good idea? Like, who thought putting up all this wallpaper in every single house in America was a good idea? Like, was it my parents or was it my grandparents? Who do I need to yell at for all this awful wallpaper? Like, who in the 60s and the 80s, like, building a brand new house? Like, yeah, we're thinking about painting the kitchen, you know, sky blue, eggshell white. I have an idea, honey. Why don't we put a giant sticker on the wall? Won't that look pretty? Just a bunch of diagonal roses going down. Isn't that going to look awesome in the kitchen? Like, no, it looks terrible in there. I swear, I think our parents just put up the wallpaper just to prank us. Like our grandparents were like, yeah, we're gonna have an awful time taking down that wallpaper in 50 years. This is gonna be great to watch. Like every time we were ripping off the wallpaper, it was like a metaphor for like me peeling back my parents' mistakes, like foreclosure, having a divorce, having kids in the first place, that second divorce. Like, they could have just drew on the wall with Sharpie. Like, that would have been fine. They could have just painted on the wall with Sharpie. You can paint over Sharpie. You can't paint over wallpaper. Well, you can and you did, and that's exactly what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> oh, my God, it's terrible. Uh, in my old neighborhood, there were some kids breaking into homes and vandalizing homes and stealing things out of people, people's houses. And I said, well, at least they didn't put up any wallpaper in any of the houses. Like, that would have been awful. Can you imagine some little Satanist, devil-worshipping skateboard kids running around your neighborhood with a giant roll of wallpaper, just plastering your kitchen with paisley wallpaper? Like, oh, the humanity. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine you guys come home tonight and like, oh my god, that comedian kid was right. Paisley wallpaper and just a bunch of oranges in a diagonal shape. This is beautiful in here. Uh, one of my last living situations, uh, I was living with a girl, and me and her have been friends since like eighth grade. We've known each other for years. And uh, I would constantly, unintentionally scare her. Like I would just walk into the kitchen and so, say, oh my God, John, you scared me. So one day I come home from work, it's like four in the afternoon. She's sitting on the couch watching Forensic Files. For whatever reason, all girls love to watch Forensic Files. Every episode is about a girl getting murdered and tortured, and women are like, hmm, I wonder what this episode is about. She's going to die at the end. Like, that's what's going to happen. So she's scaring herself half to death. I, I come walking in the front door. She goes, oh my God, John. You scared me. I'm like, woman, I live here. Like, what do you want from me? I live here. Like, I'm on the lease. Like, what do you what do you expect? Like, you haven't gotten used to this six-foot man walking around your residence. We've known each other since the eighth grade. Like, I swear, I think she thought I was just like this friendly ghost that kind of did stuff around the house. Like, some ghosts to like open up cabinets, to move your car keys. Not the ghost of John. I cut the grass, I took out the trash. <laughs> like, oh, the ghost of John was here. Oh, how do you know? Rent is on my bed. Isn't that convenient? I'm way better than Casper. Uh, well, one type of show that I've always liked to watch, I've always been into astrology and outer space stuff. And uh, one guy I've always really liked is uh, my guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You guys know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Um, I, I like Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't understand a word that comes out of that man's mouth. I, like, I'm sitting on the couch high, eating Cheetos, and like Neil deGrasse Tyson comes on. I'm like, oh, here he is. Here's my guy. And Neil deGrasse Tyson's like, in the cosmos, the nebulose implodes in the nucleus, creating a black hole of dark energy that enters into the white dwarf. And I'm just like, Yep, that's it. That's how space works, everybody. The white dwarf from the fuel injectors and the cosmos, like, that's it. That's how space works. It's like when I listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's kind of almost like I didn't drop out of high school. Uh, it's almost like I graduated from MIT, too. Like, I just, I just repeat things he says, and I'm like, yeah, like, I'm really smart. 
Uh, I'm watching a lot of TV, and am I the only person that finds it extremely ironic? The TV show The Simpsons predicts the future, but the TV show Futurama does not predict the future. Am I the only one that's like on to Matt Graney? Like, all right, you have two shows. One predicts the future and one does not. You're fooling everybody else, but you're not fooling me, man. Like, I know exactly what's going on. Uh, I've been watching a lot of things here recently. And uh, having said that, if watching pornography has taught me anything, it's how to spell the word amateur. That is what taught me. It taught me how to spell the word amateur. Are you guys like me? You were, you were, you were 25. Oh, John, you're laughing. Or were you guys like me? You were 25 years old going on Pornhub. You thought amateur was A-M-A-T-E-R. That is not, that is not how you spell amateur. Amateur is A-M-A-T. It auto-corrects me, so I know how not how to spell amateur. Thank you, Piper Perry. Thank you. Uh, but I'm so dumb, uh, but before porn, I didn't know how to spell DJ. Before porn, I'm so dumb, I didn't know how to spell ATM. Uh, for those of you that aren't laughing, which weren't not most, I'm not going to explain what ATM means. This is kind of a family venue. I also don't want to leave a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> so I'm not going to explain what ATM means. It's weird. You guys can just Google it later. Or don't Google it. That would be a good idea as well. Some look at images. <laughs> video is <laughs> ended. Hopefully it'll just be an ATM of PNC and you're just like, that joke does not make any sense. That's perfectly fine. Just not, don't understand the joke. That would be great. My mom's in the audience, so things are extra weird. <laughs> We're not talking about that one, car ride home. I remember like when I was younger, like I'm the youngest, I remember like, oh, don't tell John what that means. And now it's like, I'm older and it's like, I don't tell adults what things mean. Like, no, no, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, one thing I, I don't like, I don't like it when uh, people are talking about a high quality item and they refer to it as, oh, this is the Rolls Royce of microwave. This is the best top of line microwave. This is the BMW of refrigerators. This is the Mercedes Benz of refrigerators. Like if I were to buy the Mercedes Benz of refrigerators, what does that mean? It's going to break down all the time. Maintenance is going to be through the roof. I'm going to have to drive two hours to go to a special auto mechanic just to get my refrigerator fixed. No, 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 no. I don't want the Cadillac of anything. I want the Honda Civic of everything. That's right. That's right. I want to teach you if you guys were a smart crowd or not. I'm starting to like you. You guys are I'm warming up to you, you guys, you guys like the, the Honda Civic? Like, no, I, I, if Honda made a refrigerator, that would be the most long-lasting, cheap refrigerator ever. Oh, I got the Cadillac of ovens. It heats up from zero to 30 in two minutes, but it cooks food the exact same, right? Like, it's the same thing. Oh, but it impresses the neighbor. That's, I'll, stick to my, I'll stick to my Honda Civic uh, microwave whatever the hell I was talking about. <laughs> uh, recently, uh, there's been a lot of new technological advancements to uh, ingesting marijuana, like a lot of new things, like all the adults are about the CBD, uh, you, know, you have the gummies, you got the vape pens or whatever. And I'm not really into like the new stuff, like I'll take maybe a small gummy, I'll take a couple hits out of a vape pen, but like, I don't really like it, but I draw the line at blowtorch. Like, I'm not smoking dabs with the blowtorch. I don't know what the young kids are doing. They're taking the state of matter of marijuana and taking it into a state of matter that you need the power of a thousand suns to burn it. Like, oh. uh, <laughs> like, whenever I'm like smoking weed with my friends and someone pulls out the blowtorch, we go from Dave's parents' garage to an industrial steel factory. Like, 
I don't feel safe. Everyone has a blowtorch except me. They put on their welder's mask. They strap me to the chair. They shove a tube down my throat like a clockwork orange. I'm like, all right, John, we're gonna get you high. I'm like, no, 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 not this high. Call me old fashioned, call me stuck in the past. Whatever happened to a crushed can of Pepsi and a big lighter? Like, whatever happened? Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to taking the, 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 the dryer sheet and putting it around an empty toilet paper roll and blowing it out of your parents' window? Like, whatever. Like, we have, I, I don't know where we've gone, but like, I don't, I don't really like it where we've gone. Uh, it's, it's, it's not for me at all. Uh, I've, had a, I've had a lot of jobs in my life, and uh, I've had a lot of restaurant jobs, a lot of um, bar jobs, and working in a restaurant, working in a bar, it can be kind of fun, things can be kind of laid back, working in a restaurant, working in a bar, except on health inspector day. That's a bad day at Chili's when the health inspector pulls in. That's not good. Whenever you see the health inspector, you assume it's the health inspector. It's like someone in like nice khakis, a button down, they have that little briefcase thing with them. You're like, no, that guy's looking way too nice for this subway. Like, no, that, that, that's the health inspector. That's the health inspector. And when you notice the health inspector is coming, you gotta tell everybody else at your job that the health inspector is coming. You turn into Paul Revere riding around on your horse. The British are coming, the British are coming. World War II bombs are going off, everyone's just freaking out, hands are flying everywhere. You start doing things you've never done before. Wash your hands, wear gloves, do weird stuff. And then you remember, your, your, your boss told you to clean that oven two months ago. You haven't touched it. And you now have five minutes to do a two hour job like, it's D-Day, boys. We're going down today. Like, this is going to be a bad. We're going to act. This isn't going to happen. And uh, if you worked in the food business, uh, you have these things called sanitation strips. You like dip it in the water, and it tests the like base and the acidity of the water that's cleaning your dishes. And I'm just like, you hired me to wash your dishes. I am not Nikola Tesla. Like, I am not doing this. Like, what the hell are you talking about? I, like every time the health inspector asks for the sanitation strips, it's always in a plastic container and it's all, either brand new roll and you're like, yeah, we use this all the time. Or it's this dirty, mildy, bleached out, piece of shit looking thing and you just hand it to this government health inspector and we use this all the time, I swear. And like no one ever uses sanitation strips. I would say the sanitation strips just go down the drain but that means someone actually used them, okay? And we do not use them at all. Um, well, one of me and my friends, we were kind of having a guy talk, and one of my friends said, oh, you know, I was in a one night stand situation with this girl, and like, I always have to go home to my own bed. Like, I can never stay the night at a girl's house when like, it's just a random hookup. I'm like, all right, yeah, I get that, but not me. Not me, ladies. When you bring me over for intimacy, you got me to the AM. I'm not going in. <laughs> I'm staying the night always. And the reason why I like to stay the night at a girl's house, oh, you ever slept in a woman's bed? Oh, it's so nice in there. You ever slept in a girl? Like, like I'm a dirty peasant and I get to sleep where the queen sleeps. Like, this is so nice in here. Like, I'm literally a jester and she is a princess and you're like, you're gonna let me sleep here tonight? Like, All right, oh, yeah, I'll sleep here tonight. And it's like, you ever smell the woman's sheets? You ever smell the woman's sheets? It smells like cinnamon covered strawberries. Like, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how girls keep their sheets smelling so good. I think they wash them. I think that's what they do. You wash them, don't you? You actually wash them, dry you use the whole, you don't use your dryer sheets for smoking weed, do you? You use it in the dryer and everything. All right, uh, I'm on to you now. And like the girls don't have blankets. You don't have blankets. You have three inch thick comforters. Oh my God, I just cozy up in a girl's bed. It's like laying in a hot deep dish pizza. Oh. And just like every, every like blanket is just like a layer of like cheese, like pepperoni, 
sausage. Like, I don't even want this text. Just give me that damn bag you have. Like, oh, it's cozy up in a girl's bed. And then I think about what my friend said. He drives home. Hell no, I'm not going to drive home half drunk to sleep in my bed. Have you ever slept in my bed? My bed is like a cold, thin crust microwave pizza with an extra topping of cum. It's terrible in there. And you do not want anything to do with my bed. Uh, one time, I, I was out, and I was talking to this girl, and I, like, I was like, can I give you my number? I was like, going to ask her out. And she was like, you seem like a nice guy, and you're relatively attractive, but you kind of look like Ted Bundy fuck Adam Levine. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a yes? <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Thank you.